Hello everyone, today in the series of Duplex Scale interviews, we have with us a very special guest, Dr. A.K. Singh, who is a practicing endocrinologist from Kolkata. Thank you so much, Doctor, for Hi. the interview. Uh, so let's begin with the first question. Uh, so has your practice uh, or does practice basically or treatment change after CV outcomes trial? Well, uh, it need to be changed because uh, we have a plenty of cardiovascular outcome trial which was mandated by US FDA uh, since 2007 rosiglitazone fiasco you know rosiglitazone was one anti-diabetic drug which was wonderful in terms of glucose control and durability but unfortunately had uh, you know increase in heart failure and increase in heart attack and uh, at that point of time the meta-analysis uh, done through all the randomized control trial of rosiglitazone uh, investigator found that there was a signal of increase in heart attack and uh, and that led perhaps USFDA to do a mandatory CB outcome trial for all the anti-diabetic drug which is supposed to be used in type 2 diabetes to show that they are cardiovascular friendly at least they, are, they should be cardiovascular safe so with this mandate in 2007 uh, all uh, anti-diabetic drug post 2007 which is supposed to be used in type 2 diabetes has to underwent uh, CB outcome trial primarily this was a CB safety trial uh, to show that this drug is cardiovascular neutral but many of uh, those anti-diabetic drugs later on found to be not only the cardiovascular neutral but cardiovascular you know friendly in the terms of the reduced cardiovascular uh, different endpoint. Um, so the initial, uh, you know, uh, the trials with one of the class of uh, anti-diabetes drug we call as a DPP-4 inhibitor, they underwent a CV outcome trial and right now we have got four CV outcome trials with DPP-4 inhibitor, all of them came as a neutral. No benefit was seen, neither any detrimental effect was seen on heart with DPP-4 inhibitor in these four CV outcome trials with, with DPP-4 inhibitor. The only issue which came was... Uh, increase in heart failure which was very unexpected because it wasn't seen in any uh, you know previous phase 2b or experimental studies that there was a signal of heart failure so in one of the cb outcome trial called severed tb with sexagliptin there was an increase in heart failure and uh, because of this you know increase in heart failure which was such an unexpected finding usmda put level of heart failure to entire class of dpp4 inhibitor so naturally then the next uh, CB outcome trial on DPP-4 inhibitor were looking for whether this is a class effect or it was specific to one molecule. So since then uh, three other CB outcome trial for example examine was done with alogliptin it is not available in India and then Sebert uh, in TECO's trial with citagliptin uh, they looked for the heart failure and did not find any heart failure signal. And the last trial in the in this DPP-4 inhibitor class was uh, with uh, linagliptin and this very recently presented and published there was no signal of heart failure. So now we are at least convinced that two molecules in the same class like cetagliptin and linagliptin is not associated with heart failure whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So that perhaps gives clinician a you know, bigger relief that this class of drug did not increase heart failure. The next class of anti-diabetic drug is a ZLT2 inhibitor. These are very popular drugs because it is not only control glucose but also reduce body weight significantly. It reduces body uh, blood pressure significantly uh, and in their CB outcome trial not only they shown uh, cardiovascular neutrality but they shown that they decrease cardiovascular death mm -hmm. so the first in the line was uh, impareg outcome trial with impagliflozin they not only showed neutrality but they showed by using this drug you can reduce the cardiovascular death mm -hmm. by you know 38 percent and then since then two more trials uh, was presented one with CANA is called CANVAS trial they also showed that there was 14% reduction in the composite of three-point mass. There was reduction in the heart failure. The similar data was there also in, in, in the impareg outcome trial. And the last trial came was with uh, uh, with dapagliflozin in declared TB. And in, in this particular trial, which was very recently presented, uh, the composite of heart failure and cardiovascular death was significantly reduced. So all the three SGLT2 trials not only showed cardiovascular neutrality, but actually reduced different cardiovascular endpoints. The third class and the final 
in the CB outcome trial was a GLP-1 receptor agonist. This is one of the anti-diabetic drug which is used as an injectable. Mm. And uh, their initial few trials, uh, CB outcome trial, showed cardiovascular neutrality. But one of the first trial with liraglutide in leader trial, they also showed reduction in the composite of three-point mass and reduction in cardiovascular death. Mm. Since then, uh, newer trials with GLP-1 agonist has also shown improvement in the different cardio cardiovascular endpoint. And very recently, the harmony trial with LB glutide was presented. They also showed reduction in the three-point mass. They also showed redu reduction in the MI. For the first time, one anti-diabetic drug was associated with reduction in heart attack. And now we have got a top-line result from one another molecule, GLP-1 agonist called dulaglutide. Uh, uh, this dulaglutide has got a top-line result that also shown reduction in the uh, you know three-point composite of mass. And finally, we have got only one oral GLP-1 agonist. All GLP-1 agonists are injectable, but only one oral GLP-1 agonist is called oral semaglutide. Their data was presented last night as a top line result. It's called Pioneer 6. And this trial with the oral semaglutide, there was a significant reduction in the cardiovascular death. So suddenly, you know, we, we were interested to find out only cardiovascular neutrality, but these newer anti-diabetic agent has shown reduction in the different cardiovascular endpoint. So, given all these data, the current you know guidelines seems to be changed, and now we have shifted from only uh, you know drugs to be used as anti-diabetic drug. Now this is a mandatory rule that if your your patient has got a established cardiovascular disease, after metformin either use a GLP-1 agonist or a ZLT2 inhibitor. If your patient has got a known heart failure or chronic kidney disease after metformin use a ZLT2 inhibitor or GLP-1 agonist if it is not contraindicated. So yes, after all these CB outcome trial, treatment of type 2 diabetes has changed uh, a lot. Okay, alright. Uh, so doctor, moving on to the next question. Uh, how is ADA and uh, ES, EASD guidelines 2018 is different from the other guidelines? Right, so as I said, the ADA ESD guideline uh, is a uh, consensus document from both American Diabetic Association and European Association of Diabetes. Now, every three years, they make a consensus based on uh, the current development and the literature. So, the first ADASD guideline happened in 2012 and then next happened in 2015. The third edition recently presented at ESD in Berlin and was simultaneously published in Diabetes Care and Diabetology. This ADASD guideline 2018 is different from the previous guideline that in previous guideline, you can use any drug after metformin. Okay. But in current ADA ESD guideline 2018, now it has become almost mandatory. As I said, mm. because of this all CB outcome trial, mm. that if your patient has got established cardiovascular disease, mm. you should preferably use GLP-1 agonist or a ZLT2 inhibitor. Mm. Or if your patient has got established heart failure or chronic kidney disease, prefer a ZLT2 first or GLP-1 agonist. So now this has become a different from the previous guideline. Previous you were supposed to use any drug after metformin. Now, almost it has mandated from the CB outcome trial that if your patient has got a heart disease, you should use the drug which has shown improvement in the heart disease like a ZLT2 inhibitor or GLP-1 agonist. So, it's a completely different from the previous study. Uh, Alright. Uh, so, doctor, uh, lastly, what is the current status of sulfonylureas in the treatment of type 2 diabetes? Well, sulfonylurea, you know, is the gold standard drug since last 60 yeah. years. Uh, uh, this is in use because of, you know, the, the main reason behind using sulfonylurea that it is a very effective anti-diabetic drug. Uh, it is very cheap in a country like us, in a developing country, the cost matters a lot. Uh, even ADASD 2018 said that if your patient uh, can't afford these costly drugs like a ZLT2 inhibitor or GLP-1, when you don't have any insurance-based, uh, uh, you know, treatment plan, you, you, your patient has to uh, pay from their pocket then still sulfonylurea has got a huge place. Uh, only issue with sulfonylurea is a great drug. I mean, we are using it for last 60 years. Uh, but then the in today's era, with all this cardiovascular outcome trial, we exactly don't know whether these drugs are safe in a patient with heart disease. So if your patient doesn't have established cardiovascular disease, there is no harm in using sulfonylurea as long as you are not provoking hypoglycemia. The modern hypoglycemia like glimipride and glyclazide in particular uh, has a very less potential of hypoglycemia compared to the previous generation of uh, you know, sulfonylurea like glivenclamide or glipizide. 
So sulfonylurea uh, has got a huge role, especially in our part of the world, because very cheap drug. We are confident. We are using it for last 60 years. Uh, but then, uh, the, with you know, with the advent of newer drugs, it ha it is somehow pushed into little back stage because uh, we don't know the cardiovascular safety of this particular drug. We don't have any trial in terms of cardiovascular safety, uh, and because the newer drugs. Uh, has shown their metal in, in reducing cardiovascular. So, at the end of the day, sulfonylurea, we need it in our country. You can't, you know, manage diabetes with even a ZLT2 alone or GLP1. You need diabetes, is multifactorial disease. You can't treat diabetes with one drug. So, even at the end, if you are not using as a second line drug, somewhere down the line, it will come as a third or fourth line drug. So, SU has got a role, especially in our part of the world, and modern sulfonylurea, in particular, glycolagic which has a least potential to cause hypoglycemia in the entire class uh, should come to the forefront. It has got a role to play. All right. Okay. Uh, thank you so much sir, for you. the interview. It was a pleasure having my you pleasure. here.